As people of the world get more and more comfortable with going back outdoors, everyone will start going to new places and traveling more. So I thought, why not share what I personally own and use in my everyday carry and travel backpack? One second. <clears throat> this right here. Let's get started. All the items we discussed today can be found in the description of the video down below, just in case if you're interested in any of these particular items that I mentioned. This right here is the Peak Design Everyday Backpack, but more specifically, this is the 30 liter version of the Midnight Color. It comes in a smaller 20 liter variant, which is more in line with what is allowed as a personal item on an airplane. The good thing is, if you're interested in the 20 liter version, all the items I'm about to mention fit inside the 20 liter version fine too. So if you don't want the TSA people getting mad at you, the 20 liter might be the way to go. I've done a video on this bag in the past, but that was the version one. The version two differs from the version one in a few different areas. It rounds out the overall design, so it's no longer so edgy looking. As you can see, it's more rounded out and improves on the old models in a couple of different ways. There's lots of cool little quality of life features like magnets in the padded straps to keep it from flapping around, hidden compartments everywhere on the bag. There's also multiple ways to access the main compartment of the bag. Pretty much you can access it from this top panel up here as well as all these side panels over here. And inside of the bag, there's these little dividers that you can use to separate the main compartment into different segments, and these can be completely removed if you need to as well. It comes with three of them. The bag is also really, really durable and water resistant. It's honestly my favorite backpack. I can't go back to using anything else after using this thing. Uh, it's so well thought out. It's like they made the bag with literally everything I had in mind. I have nothing but compliments for it. But if I were to point out any negative of this bag at all, it would be that this bag costs nearly $300. Is it worth it? I admit it can be a hard sell for some people. It personally took me some convincing, but once you try it, it's it's kind of hard to go back. My version one is still functioning properly and it's still in pretty good shape. Even though it's been through a lot of buses, airports, and the outdoors. But honestly, there are great backpacks that don't cost anywhere near as this much. But if this bag still really interests you, I've attached it in the links down below. Now, this is the Zushi Rushi water bottle. It's great for keeping your beverages hot. Story time, when I first bought this thing, I poured some hot coffee into this thing in the morning, and then I kind of forgot about it until the afternoon. And stupidly, I went in for a quick sip. It made me panic a little because it was still really, really warm at the end of the day. So uh, that's just a personal statement on how warm this keeps uh, your drinks. It's slim, it comes in different sizes, the lid pops off with a button, it happens to match the backpack, and overall, it's just a nice water bottle. It is a bit pricey though, but I did compare it to other water bottles in the past, and it does fantastic against some of the well-known water bottles. Now let's move on to these, the Peak Design hooks. These things are so versatile. Basically, you strap these onto things, and they can be used with a ton of different Peak Design products. They snap into place and can be easily removed by pressing them down. I use them to quickly take my camera on and off a camera strap and hook keys or AirPods to the Peak Design backpack. It's really useful if you wanna quickly attach and remove items to a bunch of Peak Design products. I also keep an Apple AirTag on this bag because really you can never be too careful, right? <laughs> Depending on which bag I'm using, I'll move the AirTag between my two backpacks because honestly, I personally feel like there's no need to spend $30 for every single backpack I own. But enough about the exterior of this bag. What's going on inside this thing? What kind of hidden goodies are in here? Let's open it up and find out. I like to carry pouches or organizers within this backpack because it lets me separate my items into their own groups. That way, I know which one contains all of my work-related items and which one contains all of my play items, you know, like video games. The dividers in the backpack help with that too because I like to use them as, as shelving for different pouches. Let's start with, oh, camera lens nearly fell out. Let's start with this bottom one right here. This is the Orbit Key Nest. 
It's this small and portable rectangular organizer, and it looks good aesthetically if you're into that minimal look. Fun fact, I've actually purchased one of these with my own money, and OrbitKey, the company behind this product, one day reached out and said, hey, we're sending an OrbitKey nester way. So if you're wondering why I have two of these, and they're showing on the screen right here, that's why. The lid can be flipped up or taken off to reveal the inside compartment. It has these tiny little plastic and Velcro dividers that help you organize all of the little items you have inside of it. The lid also has room for papers, SD cards, Nintendo Switch cartridges, or whatever you're into. But the most interesting part of it is the lid itself. It houses a wireless charger on the left side. It has a USB port on the back to turn it on, and you can remove the lid and use that solely as a wireless charger too. The body is also solid, so the Nest doesn't flex to fit the space it's in. So for example, if you tried to squeeze a Nintendo Switch into the thing, it, it won't work. I tried. So just keep that in mind. Now let's talk about what I keep inside of it. This is the Samsung T7 SSD. It has USB 3.1 Gen 2 speeds, which means up to one gigabyte a second read and write speeds and is good for future proofing too, since it's marginally more expensive than the cheaper Samsung T5 and is twice as fast. I pretty much edit all of my YouTube videos off of these external drives because it makes it really easy to use these T7 SSDs between different computers, depending on what machine I feel like editing on. I can easily switch between the M1 iMac or the M1 MacBook Air, depending on my personal needs. Do I feel like sitting or do I feel like laying in bed and video editing? <laughs> in the past, I've actually reviewed the fingerprint version of this same external SSD. So if you're interested in that, there is a video about that. However, they perform very similarly. And honestly, I like this version much more. What I store on these things, you know, just my own personal video footage for this YouTube channel, isn't private enough for me to justify that extra price tag for those security features. All right, now this right here is the small rig SD card holder. It holds three SD cards, two micro SD cards, a SIM card, and a SIM card ejector tool. I use it pretty much to hold SD cards for my camera. I like it because it's slim, it has a smooth metal housing, and although it may not have the best protection, you gotta admit, it looks kinda nice. No water protection though, so you gotta be careful with that. The rest of the items I keep inside the nest is just a charging cable and a power brick, nothing special. Okay. Moving on. I take myself to be an amateur when it comes to photography, but that doesn't mean I don't enjoy it. But I do hate big clunky cameras, especially when I'm outside or traveling. That's why I carry this camera, the Sony a7C. I don't have it on hand right now because it's kind of the camera that's overshooting this angle right here. So sorry, you'll just have to enjoy this B-roll of the camera. It's a full frame mirrorless camera that's in the small body of Sony's much smaller A6000 series cameras. So why did I pick this camera instead of something else? Well, basically because it has all of the benefits of Sony's larger A7 series cameras in a smaller, much more manageable package. And people are less intimidated by someone carrying a smaller camera around outside. Also, it weighs less too. Aesthetically, I like the more retro silver black look and it just looks good. It is a bit pricey though, at $1,800 for the body only. So I'll attach some similar, but much more budget friendly alternatives like the great A6400 and A6100 down below. And plus, the A7C is more for people that are familiar with using mirrorless or DSLR type cameras, while the A6100 and A6400 is a nice stepping stone for people that are trying to use something more than just the camera on their smartphone. All right, moving on. The next pouch we're looking at is this one, the Peak Design Travel Pouch. It comes in a few different colors. The pouch itself is water resistant, but inside is filled with a bunch of pouches and zippers that open up like an accordion. It can fit quite a few items inside of it. I like to keep my Nintendo Switch in here just in case I want to play something. The Logitech MX Anywhere 3, some charging cables, and this Hyper Juice charger. Normally I think wall chargers are boring because if you really think about it, most of them are boring, but the Hyper Juice wall charger is an interesting piece because it has two USB-C ports, a USB 3 port, and a wall outlet plug that integrates to the back of it. 
Basically, the idea is that you can stack multiple of these on top of each other with no drop in charging speed for your devices for up to 10 of these things. And you can add as many charging ports as you need. This is a 65 watt variant, but there is a 100 watt variant as well. I originally got this from a Kickstarter campaign, but these things are starting to make their way to retailers like B&H. I think the stacking function is pretty cool too, and I find it useful for places like hotel rooms or even coffee shops where it's hard to find good outlets for all your items. The MX Anywhere is the mouse I use when I'm out of the house because it's portable and isn't as bulky as the MX Master 3 that's normally the mouse that I use. It also comes in three different colors and lets you switch between three different devices on the fly with literally a touch of a button. So that was what's inside my Peak Design tech pouch. However, there's one more compartment of this bag that we haven't talked about yet. In this compartment, I have two things. The 12.9 inch M1 iPad Pro and the M1 MacBook Air. I like this combination because I could be using the MacBook to get some work done and use the iPad for entertainment purposes or combine the two to use as a dual screen mobile workstation. And between these two different devices, I cover a large range of different things that I can get done. The 12.9 inch M1 iPad Pro is a little large and really pricey, but currently that's my go-to iPad because I'm currently preparing a review for it. Do I personally recommend you get one? Well, you'll have to see that review for the opinion. In all seriousness, I think the base model iPad, iPad Air, or even the 11 inch iPad Pro would do fine as a replacement for this for how I'm personally using it. When you're on the go, you might need a laptop or a tablet to use as a working machine. I don't always take both of these, but I kind of change it up depending on whatever I need to do. If I plan to edit videos, then obviously I'm gonna be taking the M1 MacBook Air because it does such a great job at doing that. If I'm just traveling for leisure and not expecting to work at all, then I'm taking the, the iPad. If I'm planning to be gone for a while, like over a week, that's when I consider taking both. I like having both for the versatility that that brings. Although for some people, maybe having just an iPad is good enough. If I didn't edit, the majority of my videos in Final Cut Pro, I probably just, just take the iPad with me when I travel. Okay, and the final items that I keep with me are one, an Apple Watch, which, <laughs> wow, I'm a hypocrite, it's not on my wrist, and two, everything that I have in my pocket. That would be this extra wallet and my car keys with an Orbit key key organizer. I primarily use my Apple Watch for notifications and alerts and really as a glorified health tracker. The extra parliament wallet gives you easy access to your cards by pressing down a button that pushes all your cards up for easy access. Honestly though, I just like pressing the button. It's a bit thicker than your regular wallet, a bit taller as well, and also a bit narrower. It comes in a few colors and configurations, so if you're interested in wallets with buttons, I'd suggest looking at Exeter or even their competitor, Secret. From there, I have a pair of AirPods Pro. I used to carry noise-canceling headphones with me onto planes, buses, and whatever places I went to, but that takes up a lot of space and adds weight in your bag. The AirPods Pro do not cancel noise as good as full-blown headphones, like the Sony 1000 XM3, XM4, XM5, XM7, XM8, XM9, whatever they're on right now, but it's good enough for use on airplanes and buses. And it's still small enough to fit in your pocket without looking like what I call rock hard syndrome. So that's everything I carry with me within my backpack and on my person. I feel at this point, everyone watching this video knows me way too well. I feel like we've grown closer because of this or rather, you know too much about me now and I'm gonna have to get a restraining order. I hope at least you found this video enjoyable, useful, and that something caught your interest. Is there anything you personally have that you just have to carry with you? And I don't mean the obvious, like clothes, underwear, or a toothbrush. Let me rephrase that, all right? Is there some non-essential items you take with you that you believe are absolutely needed? Did any items I say catch your own personal interest? What was most helpful? Leave all that down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And well, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you all next time after I sign that restraining order request. Bye.